What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dead Labs and today I'm going to recreate all of these Y2K logo elements. Uh, so yeah guys, uh, I got a lot of comments on my Y2K logo video asking me if I could do any more Y2K logo related videos. Uh, so I figured I grabbed like five shapes that I see in lots of different logo styles uh, in this Y2K style and I'm going to show you how to recreate it. So before we start out, you can actually get the project file for this tutorial and all of my other tutorials on my Patreon. There's a link in the description for that. And if you want to learn more, there's actually an explanation at the end of this video. Besides that, if you want to support the channel, leave a like and a comment below. That will really help me out and support the channel and basically give me more motivations to make more tutorials for you guys. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into this. All right, so the first one is this rounded star. It's actually fairly easy to make, uh, but for the people who are completely new to Illustrator, this is probably the way to start out. So the first thing I'm going to do is under the rectangle tool here on the left, I'm going to grab the star tool. And I'm going to grab the center of this artboard here and we're just going to drag that out. So if you're using the star tool, you can just drag this out, hold your mouse button. And there's actually a couple of buttons on your keyboard which you can use to manipulate the star on this. So for example, if you hold control on your keyboard or command if you're on the Mac, you can drag out the stars. And that's only the outer points, as you can see here. Uh, so yeah, this gives you a little bit more control over how sharp you want your star to be. Uh, if you hold the shift button, the star will stand up straight, so you don't have to rotate it anymore. Uh, so yeah, this gives you a little bit more control over the star that you want to do. Uh, so I'm going to hold shift to keep mine up straight, and I'm going to make mine pretty long, like that. Alright, so for the sake of this tutorial, let's just give this the same style as the other shapes. So I'm going to remove the fill by pressing slash on my keyboard. And I'm going to give this a stroke a little bit bigger. And I'm going to grab the same color as here. All right. Make this a little bit thicker, maybe 30p. And now with the star shape selected, we can actually run these corners off fairly easy. If you click the direct selection tool or press A on your keyboard, you can see that there are these round knobs here. And basically, if you drag these out, you get a round star. Fairly easy, right? I just want to go and do one step further and I want to give a little bit more control over the shape that I'm making. So with the lasso selection tool here, it's the fourth one in a row, and I'm going to draw a circle around the inner points of the star here. And now if we grab the direct selection tool, you can see that we can round off the inner holes of the star. All right, so I'm going to do the same, but then draw a circle about the outer points. So now we have the outer point selected, I'm going to grab the direct selection tool again and we can play around with the rounding of this star. So yeah, by separating the points and selections you can actually get more control over the rounding of your object here. So yeah, this gives us with a little bit of a different star than here above, but uh, basically it's the same principle, it just depends on the rounding that you want to choose. Alright, so the next one is this four-sided star, uh, you can also see this a lot in Y2K logos. There's actually a super easy way to do them. So I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool, pressing L on my keyboard. I'm going to draw out a circle. And instead of using a stroke, I'm just going to switch it out to the fill by pressing Shift X on my keyboard. Now we're going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Plucker and Bloat. And if you make this bigger, you can actually see that it starts to form like a flower shape. But if you go to Negatives, you can get this shape. So yeah, the more you do this, the sharper it will get. I think I'm always usually fine with 80%. Uh, you can still see if we press Command Y that this is still a circle. So we really need to expand this. So we're going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. All right. So now basically the only thing that's left is duplicating this a couple of times and making it smaller. So I'm just going to do that by holding Alt on my keyboard, making it smaller. And this should be fine for now. Again, if we want to select this, and we're going to go to the direct selection tool, we can also round off the edges if we want to, which you can see at the top here. And there's one more thing here, and that's that there's an outline around these. So I'm going to select all of them. So I'm going to give these a stroke by clicking on I on my keyboard, which brings up the eyedropper tool. And now I can pick a color of anywhere on my screen. So I'm holding shift to click on the background color here. And as you can see already, if we zoom in, we now have a stroke of the background color around our shapes here. And we can just up that a little bit quick. And then if we click on the stroke, we can also align the stroke here to the outside. And there you have it. 
You can now easily play around with these. And actually want to bring this one to the front here. So we're going to go right click, range, bring to front. Like that. And then we have something similar to this. So for the next one, I'm going to use a free transform tool and the blend tool. The first thing I'm going to do is grab the star tool again. And I'm going to make a five sided star from the center and out. And I'm going to make the points a little bit less drastic. Something like this should be fine. All right. Now with this star selected, I want to actually slant this. And we can do this a couple of ways, but the easiest way is just pressing E on your keyboard, which brings up the free transform tool. So if we hold this over the top here, in the middle, you'll get this cross arrow kind of shape. And this basically means that we can now slant this. So something like this should be fine. And actually a really nice thing is that we still have the same shape as here. So we already have the outline here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rectangle tool by pressing the letter M on my keyboard. And I'm just going to go make a rectangle. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to remove the stroke here. So this is just a rectangle with the same fill color as the star. And I'm actually going to put this to the background here. So I'm going to right click, arrange, send to back. And this should be fine, making it a little bit smaller. Something like this. And then if I hold Alt uh, on my keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac, I can drag this out. And by holding Shift, I'm going to make sure that it will be in the same Y position. And I'm going to also make sure that it aligns with the top part of the star here. And now I'm going to just go make it longer by dragging it to the right, like this. So now if we want to have stripes in between here, I'm going to go select both of these rectangles. I'm going to go to Object, Blend, Make. And again, I'm going to go to Object, Blend, Blend Options. And by spacing, I'm going to click on Specified Steps. And we're going to lower this to, oh, I kind of like nine steps here. And of course, you can make this however many steps you want. And then clicking OK, we kind of have the same shape already. So if you want to control each of these rectangles separately, you're going to go to Object, Blend, expand and now you have a group of separate rectangles here all right so for the next one we're going to uh, talk a little bit about stroke options as well as the 3d option so the first thing we're going to do is press l on my keyboard to grab the ellipse tool and then under the center i'm going to draw out an ellipse like this something like this should be fine all right so and the next thing we want to do is if we press a on our keyboard which brings up the direct selection tool again you can see that this circle consists of four points to one on the top, one on the bottom, one left and one right. I actually want to add more points to this. So I'm going to go to Object, Path, Add Anchor Points. And as you can see, I linked this to a shortcut called Control 4. So if I click on this, you can see that there's now an anchor point here, there, and here as well. Uh, that basically means that every time you click this option, it will add more anchor points to this, basically dividing them. So if we click it on it again, we get more and they will always be equally placed between the other points here. Uh, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to press control four now, which again does the same thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one up from the uh, most left one and one down from the most right one. And if we change the uh, fill to a stroke by pressing shift X on our keyboard, you can actually see that we now have two of these uh, strokes here. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger, maybe like 10 points. So the first thing I wanna do is add an arrow here and end the point like in a smooth, like smaller uh, part, I guess. Uh, basically tapering the line. So with the circle selected, I'm gonna go to uniform and click on this width profile number four. This should come with Illustrator. Basically making me be able to already make this a tapered line. And I'm gonna up the stroke a little bit more so 20 points and then if we click on stroke you can see an option here that's called arrowheads so what i want to do is as you can see here the stroke profile goes uh, and ends at the right so in the left i want to add an arrow so basically on this left part here i'm going to click on an arrow that i like i like arrow three but as you can see this is way too big so the first thing we're going to do is scale this down a little bit and another thing as you can see it's kind of like rotating a little bit weird, but we can fix this if we click on a line like this. And looking at it now, maybe we want to go with a different arrow. 
maybe arrow number four. Is that arrow number four? Arrow number five, sorry. All right, so we kind of have the shape already, but if we are not satisfied with the position of the arrows, we can also delete more anchor points now. So for example, I want to delete the top anchor point here and here. So if we delete those, you can actually see that the arrows will just go with them. So I'm going to do that one more time. And uh, be sure to grab the uh, direct selection tool instead of the object selection tool here uh, to actually delete points instead of the whole shape. But one more time. Mm, actually, I was more satisfied with the other one. This one, I think. And again, if you're not satisfied, you can also up the stroke and edit the settings that we just talked about. I'm fairly happy with these ones. So now the next thing is to make this into a crazy cool 3D perspective. There's actually a very easy way for that, but before we're gonna do that, we're gonna actually expand our shape here. We're going to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And as you can see, we now have this uh, shape selected. Uh, we don't really need to flatten this out, but I'm just gonna do that by going to the Pathfinder and clicking on Unite. Right, so now we're gonna go to Effect, 3D Materials, 3D Classic. So if you have an older version of Illustrator than I have, I'm currently at Illustrator 2022, uh, you should be able to see these three options instead of the, these all. So the 3D Classic option is basically everything that's uh, in your normal one. So we're gonna go with Rotate Classic. And again, in older versions of Illustrator, this will just call, be called Rotate. Right, so we have this screen here, and basically this gives us the option to rotate the shape the way we want it to. So I'm gonna go drag this out like this. And the magic, in my opinion, starts really happening once we play with this perspective slider here. So if we slide this out more, you can really see that the angle of the lens kind of like starts changing. So if we drag this upward a little bit to get like the down corner here in our faces, you can really see what's happening here. It's something that we really like. Um, so yeah, I highly suggest just play with these around until you are satisfied with the result. I actually really like these. So I'm gonna click on OK. But as you can see, if we press Ctrl Y on the keyboard, you can still see these are just the shapes that we end up with and we haven't really expanded this yet. If you wanna do that, you can go to Object again and Expand Appearance. Uh, so as you can see now something weird is going on because we have this like square around us here and if we open the layer menu I can show you what's happening. So basically we have a group. We can just go right click and ungroup that. And now we can see that it's saying clip group here. I'm not going to talk about what a clipping mask is because we don't really need that for the rest of this video. Uh, just the one thing you got to know is go to object, clipping mask, release. And now we, these two are separated, so basically we can delete this bottom shape here. And now that we grab this, we actually have the shape that we wanted to end up with. Make it a little bit smaller. And there you have it. All right, so the last one might be kind of complicated if you're fairly new to Illustrator. So we're gonna end off with an easier one. So we're gonna grab the ellipse tool here. And we're gonna draw out an ellipse. And basically what we're gonna do is add another ellipse uh, by holding Alt on the keyboard, dragging this out. And if we press Ctrl Y, you can really see where the shape starts happening. You know, we're gonna look at this outer shape here at the top, and that's what we wanna kinda see here. So, something like this should be fine. Yeah, we're gonna drag this ellipse a little bit, and make it a little bit wider. Uh, something like this should be fine, yeah. All right, so the next part is we're gonna make a rec rectangle by pressing M on our keyboard. And from the center of the circles, I'm just gonna make a rectangle like this. All right, so if you go to this view, this doesn't really make any sense. So I'm just gonna go keep it at this one. Again, you can access this by pressing Ctrl or Command Y on your keyboard. All right, with all these shapes selected, I'm gonna grab the Shape Builder tool. You can grab that by Shift M on your keyboard or on this icon here with the two circles and a little mouse here. So if you clicked on the Shape Builder tool with all of those shapes selected, you can see that we can do something with this. And basically, if we drag all of these together, we can unite the shapes really easy. So for example, if I drag these two together, they will become one shape. If we hold Alt on our keyboard and drag some out, we will delete some. So for example, if I hold Alt now and drag over this, this will be gone. So you can kind of see what we're going to do now. So if back in the normal menu, I'm just going to hold Alt and delete all of the parts that we don't need of this shape. So this one, and that's the first part of this logo already. All right, so to get the next one, what we're going to do is hold Alt or Option again 
and drag this out. And again, I'm also holding shift after I dragged uh, to keep this in the exact same uh, height as the other one. And I'm just gonna go and put it almost exactly next to that one. So now we're gonna outline the first one to punch out the other one. Sounds a bit weird, I know. Uh, actually gonna drag this a little bit closer to that one. Maybe something like this. So again, in the outline view, we should have something like this now. All right, so we're gonna select the right shape here. I'm gonna go to the object, path, offset path. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Something like 15 pixels maybe. And for the miter limit, we're gonna scroll up to get that point here. All right, so what's basically going on now is I'm just gonna give this another color so we can see it a little bit better. There are a couple of shapes here, actually three. We have the original shape, we have the outline of that shape made with the offset path function, and we have the duplicate that's moved to the left. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the blue one and we're gonna use that to trim off parts of the left one. So I'm gonna make the left one green so we have a better understanding of what's going on. And for that, we're gonna open the Pathfinder menu. If you cannot find this, go to Window, Pathfinder. So we're gonna select the green shape and by holding Shift on our keyboard, we're gonna select the blue shape as well. And if you see in the layer menu here, and you can also really see it here, uh, but if it's a little bit confusing if you use the same colors, you can see that the green shape is on top of the blue shape. What that basically means is we need to use the bottom shape to punch out or trim off the green shape. So if we look at it in the Pathfinder, uh, that's basically this icon, minus back. You also have a minus front function, and that's something that we would have used if the blue shape was in front of the green shape, if that makes sense. But for this situation, we're gonna click minus back. And as you can see, we don't really need this blue shape anymore. I think I accidentally made a couple of duplicates. Anyways, with this green shape, I can just now make this in the same color again. And ta-da, we have the same shape as at the top here. Uh, mine's a little bit more rounded, but you can just drag out the width if you want to. Right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, I, this was a little bit more towards beginners. Uh, so if you're an Illustrator beginner, I hope this was useful to you. And if you were an experienced one, I hope I maybe inspired you to create an experiment with some shapes. If you want to get the project file for this, you can find it on my Patreon, as well as all of the other project files from all of my tutorials. You'll also get a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs web store where I sell my assets. And you'll also get an exclusive Discord role on my Discord server. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to the full episodes of my starting a clothing brand series and the respective project files for those. And again, running this channel can be quite a handful, so I would really appreciate it if you would leave a comment or a like supporting the channel, motivating me to make more videos for you guys. Because the bigger the channel becomes, the more videos I probably will make. So if you have any questions left, feel free to leave them down in the comments or you can join us on Discord. And with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.